Hey everyone, Ashley May here with the Stakes Preview for the Grade 3 Honeymoon Stakes this Saturday, June 10th out at Santa Anita Park. It's their seventh race on the card, mile and eighth on the turf course. We're looking at a group of straight three-year-old fillies. It's a good field, top to bottom. We're going to see a field of eight expected and some of the bigger names in here, Comanche Country. As we know, I was able to win the Surfer Girl back in 2022. Pleasant Wave is kind of a horse that's a little intriguing on the up and coming and an up and rising horse, as well as Paris Secret, who was very impressive last time out in a grade three event. And some other horses as well. Team Conversation has been a consistent type for underneath. So as I mentioned, eight in here. We'll start it off here with the number one Broadway Girls out of the Doug O'Neill barn. And most recently was the pace setter in that grade three event back on April 29th, going today's distance. Just tired in the end. Now you go to her races before that. She was going six and a half, and they did that thing where I actually usually like the move where you go long, you shorten up, and you go long again. But it, she was going the longest in her career at that point. She'd only gone a mile previously as was her furthest distance, and then she had to go a mile and an eighth. All in all, though, it was a good performance. She draws the rail in here. I expect her to be part of the pace scenario. Has a really nice bullet drill on the training track, going 59 flat for five furlongs back on June 4th. So she's going to be part of the pace scenario. The question is, will she hang around for a piece? The number two, Comanche Country. This one of the Phil D'Amato barn was ninth last time out in the grade two Edgewood back on Kentucky Derby Day weekend. She did not take respect in that field, ended up being won by Heavenly Sunday. Mission of Joy was third, came back to win her next outing. But we'll go back to the China Dow on this turf course going a mile. I thought she raced very well, the back of the pack early on. And at this point, Princess Patina's gone. Uh, there's no catching her. She was able to catch a flyer. She set very reasonable fractions and was just, you know, much the best. But Comanche Country was the best of the rest and was trying to make a, a little bit of a dent in that margin. But at this point, the race was over. She's raced very well in her two outings over the Santa Anita turf course. But her big thing is she's always far back. She's going to need the pace set up. Obviously, the one's going to go. There could be maybe a couple other runners in here that muddy that pace and help Comanche Country. And she's shown her talent. Uh, she's been able to rattle off, you know, three wins in a row back in 2022. And um, maybe she'd had some excuses last time out. So I, I do like her getting back to Santa Anita's turf course. The number three, Pleasant Wave, I kind of previewed, might be on the up and up. We'll take a look at that most recent performance, which is the same race that Broadway Girls was in. Uh, Pleasant Wave was in this race as well, uh, as well as Paris Secret. And they end up being the top three in here. But I get the performance. Paris Secret's the five, Pleasant Wave, you can see on the outside and the one with that shadow roll, as well as the number three, Broadway Girls on the rail. And Paris Secret ends up getting a, a little bit more tactical early on. It was a little close, but you can see this horse is closing really hard, Pleasant Wave, and is trying to draw along outside. It ends up just missing by three quarters of a length. It was her first time against graded stakes competition. And just looking at it, it seemed like the distance helped her prior to that. Six and a half was short for her in the sweet life. She did make a really nice late run after having a little bit of drifting going on, but only missed by two lengths. I really liked her performance going a mile and an eighth. Um, I thought she ran very well. Now making that second start since February and the barn continues to do well at the meet. So uh, very intrigued by Pleasant Wave. The number four, Selenia. This is one out of the Jonathan Thomas barn who uh, didn't show too much on debut at Saratoga. We know how tough those spots can be also just being a debuter. Uh, sometimes things don't go the right way. This horse is able to graduate at that Mammoth at Meadowlands meet in New Jersey. Didn't have that strong of a number, but the race we'll take a look at that is that second career win and that first level of Lawrence at Indiana. I thought this was a really strong performance. Tonight's field of 12 was assembled. And you can see uh, the silks towards the inside. You can see the colors post position four for her. She's able to get room up on the rail and sneak spy and is, you know, much the best in here. Wins by almost two lengths. There's some other horses closing, but one's really called upon. I thought she opened up nicely on the field and you can see at this point, she is gone. She strided really nicely to the wire. And uh, I think she's an improving type. We don't know what she's faced. Going to face that graded stakes competition for the first time. But Joe Bravo climbs aboard. And uh, Jonathan Thomas, to ship her out to California, to me, um, says a lot about her. And they found this spot to be the right spot for her. The number five, T in conversation. This one trained by Michael McCarthy. Kenta Sarmo is going to climb aboard for the first time. She was third in the China Doll, and I thought it was a pretty even performance. I mentioned she's sort of the horse that kind of gets those minor shares, rounds up the try, rounds up the super a lot of the time. And uh, since her maiden victory at Del Mar, that's just been what she's been doing. They've tried to have her a little bit closer to the pace. And then she's been further back in some of those efforts. And she's a closer. The one thing I will say is just looking at her efforts, I think she will be better at a mile and an eighth, just based on what we've seen so far. She's only gone a mile in most of her starts besides her debut. So the additional ground should help her, but they're gonna have to craft a trip here, just looking at the, the pace scenario, because she is typically 
far back. Move on to the number six, Paris Secret, who was fourth year in that first start at Santa Anita, everyone coming over from Ireland. And then to see the, the performance that we showed just a couple moments ago, going a mile on eighth, she looked very good in that race, was able to kind of control things in the stretch and those final jumps to the wire to win by three quarters of a length. She improved. You would have expected her to improve. So that's a positive sign. I think um, we'll see what she's made out of against this group. She's facing a couple more in this field, but uh, I think she's going to be quite talented. The number seven, Fast and Shiny. This one out of the Bob Baffert barn was fifth last time out in the Senorita. And looking at that performance, she went off favored in that spot because of the angel flight at six and a half on the downhill. She was forwardly placed, but she came up a little short on May 6th in that race. And look at the pace. I mean, they certainly went quicker in the Senorita than the angel flight. You might have expected that just kind of jumping up a little bit too. Um, but Tina Ella ended up being much the best in there. The Wild Grazers, a horse that's been fun to watch, was third in there. So disappointed. Now going to stretch out. It'll be curious to see. Obviously, you would expect her to be part of the pace scenario. She's been poorly placed, but it's been a while since she's gone long on the grass. You have to go back to November and October to find those mile turf races, and now she'll have to go a mile and an eighth. And then rounding it out, the number eight, Una Palabra. This one is interesting out of the, the Van Belvoir barn. Was fifth in that race uh, that we looked at earlier in that grade three for Venencia. Prior to that was fourth in the Sunland Park Oaks. Um, was her, you know, kind of, they tried different things with her. They put her on the turf at, at turf, um, paradise. They've put her on the dirt. Um, they haven't really figured her out too much so far. She does have a win on the grass and she does have a win, uh, on the dirt, but both at turf paradise. So she'll certainly need to step up. We'll be a long shot in here, but just worth noting, she's going to race with blinkers on and gets Ramon Vasquez in the iron. So that's the field of eight for the grade three honeymoon. I think two horses, um, we're kind of vying for the top spot in here for a moment, but I dug deeper. I think the number six Paris secret is the horse to be just based on her running style. Um, I know she's been kind of further back in those, but I think she has the ability to be a bit closer to the pace and she seemed to really relish the mile and an eighth last time out beating several runners that she's going to face again. So I use her on top. I think the two Comanche country getting back to Santa Anita's turf course should really improve my one knock on her. She's usually very far back. So I'd like to see her a bit closer uh, than we've seen in her last two outings. The three pleasant wave. I think this horse is just getting a little bit better with each start. We're going to see her on her second start since February. And her last race was very, very impressive. A career best effort from her. And then rounding out the number four. Uh, this is the, the wild card in here. Obviously, she raced very well at Indiana in that first level allowance. But now she's going to tackle graded stakes competition. But connection center to California. They must think this is kind of the right spot for her. So it's going to be curious to see the toad action on her. I do think she'll take a fair bit of respect. But for me, I want the number six Paris secret in the honeymoon. Good luck.